Jessica, how are you doing today? Hey, Lindsay, I'm fantastic. It's a beautiful day here. How are you? Really? Well, it was a rainy day and now it's beautiful. The sun has come out, so I'm feeling good. You know, it's amazing how the weather can change our mood, isn't it? Oh my gosh. I am I am too moody, I think. I am I'm a little I'm a little on the sensitive side of the <laughs> the per person range. So, yeah, sensitive. I am totally sensitive to to weather. But but I'm kind of opposite because like the the cloudy skies make me happy. <laughs> so like, so the, the sun makes you depressed? No, but I but it it puts pressure on me to like go outside and be like productive in out in the world if it's yeah. sunny. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. You feel like oh, you if you're inside, you're not living your life well or something, right? Yeah, like yeah. I feel guilty for relaxing if it's sunny. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta go, go, go. <laughs> also, part of that might be our culture, right? American culture is very go, go, go oriented. We like to always be doing, doing, doing things. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, so let's uh, encourage our listeners to slow down a little bit. Just slow down and get some <laughs> clarity. Some time out. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you're preparing for the IELTS exam. You know, that's why we built into our course the daily in the daily learning plan to build in, you know, every seventh day they're going ahead and relaxing and they're not doing IELTS prep because we need that that time off. We've talked about this before. Yeah, yeah. You need some time off or else you're going to get burnt out and you're going to do way worse. Absolutely. And burnout is not fun. I've been on the brink of it at different times in my life and it is not a good place to be. So we don't want oh our listeners gosh. to burn out. So we got to be careful. Oh to my gosh. Yourself. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Seriously, when I was in, I think I, I think I had one panic attack like my whole life. I think that's what it was because I, I was working in Taipei and I was doing so many hours just an incredible amount of hours. And like, I was walking between one job to another job and all of a sudden, like I couldn't slow down my walking and I was like breathing so fast. And like, I, oh man, it was such a Whoa. scary feeling to be That's like out of control scary. like that. Yeah. Whoa, that's scary. Wow. Oh man. Yeah. I that's. A, I mean, I was. I was okay after like an hour or not an hour. You know, I calmed down a bit and I was fine. But just that that feeling, that initial feeling of like, oh, that you know, panic. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. Not being in control Ooh. and also being in a new culture. I also had a, a, a moment of panic. I don't know if it was a panic attack, but in Japan where I was working a lot of hours, I was teaching a kid's yeah. class and I just started to feel horrible, you know, just exhausted and burnt out. And, oh man, we have to take care of ourselves. So I know. Yeah. Don't let that yeah. happen to our listeners. <laughs> yeah. For our listeners, guys, I think that listening to this podcast is a good way to avoid burnout though, because you can learn a little for bit, sure. get a few little tips and relax and take, go for a run, take your dog for a walk, something like that to avoid being <gasps> at home and studying. Yeah. In front of the computer. Yeah. We had one of the coolest emails, I think, that I've seen from our listener who he says he listens to us when he's out running, like every yeah, morning. Yeah, that was, and it was uh, yes. yeah, uh -huh. yeah, and and um, he and it was he listened to it a podcast about idioms, and um, he like after his run, he wrote one of the idioms on a piece of paper and like took took his picture with it and sent it to us, and that I was, was so stoked, cool. like I'm so yeah. That, that was, was awesome. The so a shout out to Nicolo, I believe is his name. And he is one of our biggest fans. We appreciate you for listening to our podcast all the time. So and awesome. we want you to succeed on your IELTS exam. So thank you for and the support, will, for Nicolo. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone else. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's get so, into it. Jessica, so to, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. The last episode, <laughs> the last <laughs> episode, we, um, we talked about, you know, how to approach task two, how to approach the writing exam, what sort of steps you should take, you know, and that the really like vital tip of, of an argument essay is always the best. And I think a lot of teachers don't do that because um, it, it means that they will lose teaching hours because they won't have to teach you so many essays. <laughs> Oh. You know what I mean? So some teachers are like, oh no, but you really need to learn how to organize these other five essays just in case. Okay. So oh. no, you don't. So the argument essay is all you need guys and problem solution, but that's, you know, another story. So we talked about that last time. And then we said, we talk about linking words today. So we're bringing it to, into a very specific topic today. Okay. So again, just to reiterate, so we want to focus the majority of our study time when it comes to IELTS writing task two on the argument essay, right? 
Yes. yes okay. Yes, for because sure. that's the mm-hmm. most likely question that we're going to get. Like all the other questions exactly. are unlikely except for the problem solution. So maybe focusing between the argument essay and the problem solution essay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So almost all the questions are about opinions and asking you to talk about opinions. Um, So the argument essay is the best way to approach that. You know, your opinions are never wrong. So a lot of IELTS teachers, this is sort of continuing from the last episode, but (laughs) so a lot of IELTS teachers will um, tell their students, like, if the question says, what is your opinion on this, then you have to write an opinion essay. Of course not. That's Um, ridiculous. Like, your opinion is never wrong. If you can agree with with both sides, then that's your opinion. And that's okay. great, you know? Yeah. Okay. So if you get an opinion as a question, it's okay to answer it as an argument essay using both yeah. sides. Okay. Think All of right. every, every question that has opinions, just use an argument. Okay. So, okay. Linking words. <laughs> so yeah. What kind of vocabulary do we have to use to nail this argument essay? Okay, cool. So um, I like to lay out um, outlines for my students that consist Mm -hmm. of the linking words that they could use to organize every body paragraph. All right. So let's talk about those. And then you and I could sort of brainstorm an example paragraph. Okay. Sure. That sounds Um, good. So what are they? All right, cool. So um, every sentence should have a linking word, guys. I know it doesn't feel natural. It sounds weird, but the examiner looks for linking words specifically in order to give you a good grade for organization, for coherence. So use linking words all the time. Okay, so in your body paragraph, the first body paragraph, okay, that's paragraph two, um, you Mm -hmm. are introducing the first opinion, okay? And you could Mm -hmm. say, okay, Let's think of an example question first. Lindsay, what's mm. like a, what's a hot topic today? What are people, mm. what are people arguing about today? Oh boy, a hot topic. Well, we've talked about co-ed schools. That's a good one, but we've talked about that a little bit too much. So let's see if we can come up with something else. Well, gentrification is a big one, Ooh, right? Something that's huge. happening in New York and Boston. We could talk about that. In Portland too. It's been on the news a lot lately. Yeah. So yeah. What explain what gentrification is. That's a, that's a really high level term. That's a high level term. And it would also be good for the speaking test potentially if our listeners want to bring in any ideas from the news. So what it is, is what's going on. And for example, um, in a neighborhood that I lived in, in Brooklyn a few years ago in South Park Slope, you know, this neighborhood used to be affordable. Um, so different groups of people were living there. And now what's happening is the real estate owners are realizing that these areas are areas where people want to live now, right? Cause mm-hmm. people are moving out of Manhattan into Brooklyn, right? And they're mm-hmm. renovating these apartments and skyrocketing the prices. So yep. people are having to move further out into Queens, into like South Brooklyn, way far away, an hour and a half from Manhattan, right? And that's mm-hmm. happening all over the world. And these, so neighborhoods yeah. are becoming, in some ways, neighborhoods are becoming a little safer. A crime rate is going down, but it's also sad to see certain groups of people having to be pushed out because they can no longer afford their neighborhood. Exactly. So when we, like, when Lindsay and I are talking about, you know, different groups of people have to move out, you know, unfortunately, that that usually means people that don't have enough money right? And so yeah. haven't had well, the yeah. same opportunities as everyone else. Um, mm-hmm. And that means your neighborhood will be less diverse. And it's just, it's not, you know, it's not fair. It's not fair. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's a huge thing in the news. Okay, cool. So <laughs> let's talk about that. Um, okay, so let's take one side that gentrification is bad. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so you could introduce that your first, the topic sentence, as for um, as for the people that as let's see as for those who believe gentrification is bad they mm-hmm. feel this way okay so as for blah 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 as they for feel good this way. yeah they yeah. feel this way because um their neighborhood becomes safer so that will right. be your first reason you introduce your first reason there um and then we give an example for instance right um and would and this we, be a place where something we could make something up. We could bring in a fake statistic here, right? We could throw in a statistic yeah. about crime rate dropping in New York City. We know that it has dropped in New York City, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And we could throw that in. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So let's make up a system. So uh, you said Park Slope was your neighborhood, right? So let's say, um, for instance, a, a study in Park Slope last year found that crime had decreased by 17 percent um, in the in the previous 18 months or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And again, as, as we've said in previous episodes, it is OK to make up these statistics, right? Yeah, we know totally. we don't have access to a computer. So if you haven't heard our episodes before, it's OK to lie. It's OK to make up a stat. It's actually fun. I encourage students to do this. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> it's um, and, yeah. yeah. Um, but we don't, you can't end the paragraph there. That's only two sentences. So, so far we have topic sentence, reason one, and then an example. So let's think of another reason. Um, mm -hmm. In addition, what's another reason why I, oh wait, this was supposed to be gentrification is bad. I right. just said a good reason. Okay, let's change it. <laughs> so as, we go back? <laughs> As for people who support gentrification, they believe this because the crime rate has decreased. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what's mm -hmm. another reason? In addition, in addition, you know, they believe that real estate investors should be able to increase rents as they want, right? They believe that the power should right. lie with the business owners. Great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, this is a very capitalist uh, side of things. So in addition, um, <laughs> people who support, you know, um, free, uh, let's see, free economy, uh, capitalism mm -hmm. feel that um, landlords and business owners should demand the rents that they deem fit. A fantastic mm -hmm. example of, of this is um, the, the, the house next door to me. Um, rented for 1200 a month last year and now it's already renting for 1600 a month or right know. and that's that's what happens exactly with gentrification so so in that case the linking words that we used were let's review them one more time Jessica right so we used yeah. as for to begin the perspective of one side Mm -hmm. Right. And then they believe this because that introduces the first reason. Good. And for, instance, for instance, yeah, that's a good way to give an example. Right. Mm -hmm. In addition, as the linking between. Right. That introduces the next reason. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And then a fantastic example is it's interesting, Jessica, because when we speak, we don't really use these words so much. So no, this really is yeah. a skill that we have to build for the writing test, isn't it? That's why it's so unnatural, you know, I mean, even when I'm writing, I don't use linking words like this, but this <laughs> is the, this is the clearest way to show the examiner your organization skills. And right. for listeners, this is a very easy way to memorize how to organize your ideas. So it's, it, it helps you in the exam because you already know what you're going to write and how you're going to organize it, you know? Yeah, so right, like right. memorizing this as an equation is, is super helpful. Clearly. And if we, we already know what the examiner wants, so we might as well work backwards from there and put these into our essay, guys. Go ahead and use these phrases in your essay. You don't need to make up new ones. As we've said, we're always giving you examples that you can use directly in your essays, right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. So to begin the second body paragraph, you would use um, the, the contrasting linking words. In contrast, other people hold the notion that... I really like Ooh, that phrase. Notion. Other people, Good one. <laughs> other people's notion is like idea, belief. Other people hold the notion that gentrification is negative. Is unfair. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then firstly, this is because um, res uh, longtime residents can no longer afford to live there. Right. For example, right. In that case, you could tell a story about someone that you know, right. For mm -hmm. example, my my friend at work had to move out of her neighborhood that she had been in for 25 years and she had to exactly. leave her extended family. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And then um, the next reason, moreover, um, this is pushing people out into areas that are perhaps further away from their jobs and schools, creating more challenges, right, for them to succeed. And then mm -hmm. more specifically, and again, make up, you know, or give a personal example or make up a statistic. Um, okay. That's it. It's a really, really strong, really organized. Um, wow. So 
to review those linking words in contrast. Other people hold the notion that blah, blah, blah. And listeners, I'm sure these will be on our blog. So you will be able to see these linking words. (laughs) Um, And then firstly, reason, for example, moreover, more specifically. So think of this as a math equation, memorize and practice this organization. So when you get to the exam, this is exactly what you're going to use. Awesome. So we're just plugging in our own ideas using yeah. these particular link, this vocabulary. And mm-hmm. that is the way to get a seven or higher. So guys, come back to our blog to check this out. This is episode 83. So come to IELTS.AllEarsEnglish.com and type in 83 in the search bar. And you'll also find out about how to get into a trial for our course, our a $1 trial to check out our course where we teach you this stuff in more depth. Right, Jessica? Yeah, so we have all the outlines, all the equations, as I said. Um, I go into a lot more detail about outlining various essays, like problem solution, which you might need. Um, You see model examples. Um, You can download things to practice with and and memorize these outlines. So, yeah, I mean, it has everything you need. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Everything you need. Okay. But this is really good. I love it when we, we get very specific and we literally give our listeners the vocabulary that they need. We know what the examiner wants, guys. So just take this and run with it. But you need to put in the practice time. That's the key. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You can't just memorize it, guys. You have to actually use it. So by the time you yep. get to the exam, you have all the practice and all the confidence and, you know, and you'll be set. You'll be ready. You'll be relaxed and you're going to get the highest score there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, Jessica. Well, thanks for this today. Wow. This has been a long episode, but let's wrap I it know, up. I just today. noticed that too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. That was funny. All right. Very cool. Let's wrap it up. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks, Lindsay. Have a good day.